Daniel Fitzgerald was born on the 17th of December 1872, the second child of four siblings. His parents, Daniel Fitzgerald and Mary Spillane, lived with their family at Ballyadam, Carrick Tuhul, County Cork, Ireland. Daniel was educated locally. Pre-World War I, he worked on the Barry 999 acre estate as a gardener, as did his father. He married a local girl, Mary Burke, on the 17th of October 1910. At 25 years old, he joined the British Navy on the 31st of March 1897, enrolling at Queenstown, County Cork. His decision to join was a choice he had to make due to lack of employment in his locality. His naval records show that he was initially trained at Devonport. He was described as being 5 foot 8 in height, dark hair and a ruddy complexion. The HMS Tiger became his posting for the duration of the Great War and he was on board as a stoker for the Battle of Jutland. My grandfather experienced and witnessed the horrors and sufferings of the Battle of Jutland while shoveling tons of coal in the bowls of this ship. I suppose one could conclude that he possibly survived because he was buried deep in the ocean in a cold, dust-laden atmosphere within the confines of the Stoker's area, tolerating temperatures of 150 Fahrenheit. There was poor ventilation. It was exhausting, back-breaking work. I wonder what it was like for him to think of his wife and his very young family, his two sons, Daniel, two years old, my father, and Thomas, an infant, who were at home. Would he survive to see them again, as the ship was under attack and being pitched around in the roaring seas? Tiger took several hits as the battle cruisers continued to converge on each other. My father told me in later years that his father did not speak of his experiences very often, but would frequently just stand in his doorway and stare into the distance. He recalled hearing horrific sounds and sights at the sinking of the Queen Mary as it was torpedoed and sank with the entire crew of over 1,200 people on board, lost to the deep. My father suspected, I suspect, he was experiencing, my father would say that he was experiencing great turmoil, sadness, and tragic haunting memories. From recent research conducted in Cork, it is evident that Cork City and County lost 123 sailors at the Battle of Jutland. My grandfather would have known many of these people and their families, some of whom had lived in Queenstown, Yall and Cork City. On June the 1st, 1916, at 5.30, the Tiger came out of its zigzag formation to facilitate the burials at sea of those 28 unfortunate crew members who perished in the battle. Daniel witnessed this and relived it psychologically for the rest of his life. He never slept again. Another factor of concern to Daniel that while he was at sea, Mary, his wife, struggled to rear two babies on her own. She also managed a successful poultry business. A third son was born post-war to them called Patrick. Daniel came home from the war to his native village and continued to live his quiet lifestyle, though a changed man. He is described today by those who remember him as a quiet, gentle man who liked to play with his children. He died a widower on the 17th of December 1952 and is buried at St Mary's Cemetery, Carrigtool. The thought lingers with me today is that my grandfather gave his all to the war. He returned home to be greeted by political turmoil in Ireland. His second son Thomas, born in 1914, was nicknamed Limey by some local people. Thomas died at 37 years old from alcohol poisoning, exactly a year before his father. I do not remember my grandfather, as I was too young to recall him but I cherish the fact that he returned from the war alive and he knew me for a brief time. I honour him here today, as does my son Cahill, who is his great-grandchild, and I give voice to his story as a war hero in presenting this tribute to him. On his grave is a memorial which, in translation, says, 
in the corn store of the Lord may we all meet again. And ask Wilge in Ihlande Gogashter Shin.